Hi everyone, welcome back to Digital Dreambox. Today we will be modeling a wine glass in Maya. But before we begin today, I just want to say thanks for the support of the channel so far and for checking out these videos. It means a lot, um, but let's not waste any more time and jump right in. All right, let's begin. First thing we're going to do is load in our reference. So I've provided a reference for you guys. It should be in the link below. Let's go to the two panel view. And in this one that says front, we're going to change it to side view. It doesn't really matter in this case, but I just want to show you guys how to change it. Go up to panels, orthographic, and side. And then choose this icon here. It's the image plane icon. And you'll just see you'll just need to navigate to where you saved your image. So open that up. And first thing I'm going to do is just move it up so it's kind of like sitting on the ground plane. Um, this image is just a render of um, a glass I modeled earlier. So I captured it in perspective view on purpose because sometimes when you use references, you'll need to make some adjustments. So we'll be um, doing that with this one. Um, it's a little bit bright though, so let's lower that uh, brightness. Open your attribute editor. Here, you can either lower the alpha gain or the color gain. It'll do the same thing in this instance. All right. And then what I want to do next is um, I don't want it to show up in my perspective view, right? So what we can do is just click this button. It'll just display in the view that we loaded it in, which was the side view. All right. And now let's open up our attribute editor. It's not the attribute editor, the channel box. Um, well, channel box. Yeah, channel box. And then select the image. And what we can do is um, this last icon here, we'll place it on its own layer. Select that one. And then double click the layer. And we just want to rename this. So I'm going to call it wine glass layer. Uh, click save when you're done. And then I don't want to accidentally select this. So what I'm going to do is choose this last box. and. Keep clicking that till you get an R. It stands for reference. And now we can no longer select this. All right, I'm going to close the channel box now. Tap the spacebar while my mouse is hovered over the side view. And now let's model this. So we're going to do it with Maya's curve tool. And go up to your Create tab. Choose Curve Tools, a CV Curve Tool. And what we'll do is we'll lay down some points and trace the edge of the wine glass. But we're only going to do it with with half of it, and we'll use Maya's Revolve feature to finish it off for us. All right. So I'm going to start clicking. Anywhere where the curve is a little bit drastic, you'll probably need some extra points. But don't worry about getting it too perfect, because we can always adjust the points later on. I'm just going to make my way around the wine glass. And anytime you lay down a point you don't like, just press delete um, to remove your last point. Um, if you press escape, it'll, um, you'll have to start over. And around here, you can see where that perspective view is probably going to mess us up a little bit, right? So I'm just going to make my way around here to how I know the shape is or how I want the shape to be. So it's up to you. And then when you're done, just put the last point around the center, press Enter, and that will close it off, finish it off. And then what I want to do now is adjust some of these points. So um, I want to adjust the bottom point, so I'm going to hold down the right mouse button, go to Control Vertex. I'm going to grab all these points here. I'm going to scale it flat by pressing R to go into my scale tool, drag this air box down, and then I want to move it back up a little bit. So it sits better on the table. Same thing with this section in the middle. I just want to grab maybe these three points. You don't necessarily need to have a straight stem, but I kind of want it, so I'm just going to scale this part flat as well. And then um, down here, you can see this point here. Right? It's not quite at the center, so I'm going to hold down X 
just drag this arrow so that it snaps to the center. If we don't do that, later when we revolve, our nerve surface will be, um, it'll have a hole in it. And that will mean later on when we convert it to uh, polygons, it'll also have um, holes in it. Okay, so I'm gonna select this one, just make sure that it's snapped to the center. And then over here, I just wanna make sure that I have um, just a decent thickness in, a consistent thickness, I should say, in the wine glass. Um, I'm not gonna move it too much, but I just wanna show you that you can move it, right, and adjust it, but I kinda like it where it's sitting right now. Um, yeah, so maybe I'll just move this one a little bit. Okay, there we go. Um, and now let's hold down the right mouse button, choose object mode, and I'm going to go into the perspective view. So I'm tapping the mouse button and go into here. I'm gonna select our curve. And now what we wanna do is um, revolve this. So go up to surfaces, revolve. And just like that, we have a wine gla glass shape. Mine is black, it's, it, um, the direction is reverse. So I'm going to go to surfaces and reverse direction. There we go. All right, so here we go. We have our wine glass and we're ready to um, basically convert this to quads or polygons, right? But what I wanna do is um, show you guys that you have some options to make more than one glass. I'm gonna open up the outliner and right now this glass has some history and if we adjust this curve, say you wanted the glass to be taller or shorter, you can do this and it can change it. But I like the shape that it was at, so I'm just gonna undo that, pressing Control Z. And I'm gonna take this glass, I'm gonna duplicate it. So I'm gonna press Control D to duplicate and I'm just gonna move a copy off to the side. And when you duplicate it, it loses its history. So now we can go back to the curve and we can scale this if we want, right? We can maybe scale it in or out. And this will, just like that, we have like a more of a goblet style glass. So this could be like a white wine glass. This could be like a red wine glass, right? Um, and then I'm gonna select this, Control D to duplicate and just move it off to the side. And again, I'm going to select the curve. This time I'm going to scale it up, then scale it down uniformly. And just like that, we have more of a, a champagne flute, right? So I'm going to select this one, Control D to duplicate, and we got three for the price of one. So that's just a fast way to make variations in your uh, mesh. All right. What we're going to do is work with this one. So I'm gonna select this one, and um, what I'll do is I'll just isolate it. So I'm gonna press this icon, and I'm gonna close our outliner and our channel box. And also I'm gonna hold down X and snap this back to the center. All right, so now let's open up our Modify tab. Down here under Convert, we have this thing called NURBS to Polygons. Open up that option box, and what we're going to do is, um, first, let me reset this. We're going to convert it to quads, and we're gonna do the general method today. So I like the general method for this. I'll explain why in a bit, but um, over here, you have three options. So I'll just explain. The first one, we'll take these, um, so when you give it subdivisions, it'll try and create even distances. We don't really want that because um, in some areas, you want the edges to be a little bit tighter. For the third option, right, um, it'll put subdivisions wherever we have a, um, a polygon, right, or a, a subdivision here. So, for example, if you choose three, it'll make that into three segments. Um, we really don't want that either because some areas are already pretty tight and we don't need extra segments up there, right? So we're going to work with the second option. So in the second option, the U and the V, so the U kind of stands for the horizontal direction of the curve, so almost like um, if you were cutting it lengthwise, and the V stands for the vertical, so like the kind of like the distance of the curve, right? That's how I understand it anyways. So for the V, right, I want enough so to, that it can capture the roundness of the wine glass, but really this depends on your own prop and what you need it for, whether you need um, to sell that realism or whether you're going for something more low poly. 
So for the V, I'm gonna choose 41. And the reason why I'm going with 41 is because you need to make it one number higher if you want 40 segments. For the U, I'm gonna go with maybe 41 as well, right? And then I'm going to click Tessellate. That'll close the window. And I'm just gonna move this off to the side. And just like that, we now have a wine glass. I'm gonna turn on the wireframe unshaded um, view. And you can see that the topology is really nice. It's captured this form really well, especially in the stem of the glass. And um, up here, it's done a pretty good job as well. We really don't need to rework anything. So yeah, so just like that, um, let's turn off wireframe unshaded so you can see as well. Um, we have no holes, that's good. Shading in there looks pretty good. And because this is probably gonna be a, a semi-transparent um, object anyhow, um, the shading won't affect it too much, right? But you can see the topology is pretty good. All right, and just like that, we're done. We can um, turn our other glasses into polygons as well. Um, but what I can do is show you um, some of the other methods and why I chose not to use those. So I'm gonna select this one. Let's move this off to the side a little bit more. I'm gonna go modify and convert. Right. We could have cho chose count, um, and count's pretty good as well. It does a pretty good job. Um, let's just see what the geometry count of this one was. It's 3100, 3120. So for count, we can do roughly the same one, um, 3100, same amount, I should say. And oh, I have to first select the nerve surface. So 3100, and then click Apply. And we can move this off to the side. And I just want to show you, um, here, it didn't capture the bottom curve here very well, right? So it's, it has some issues, and at the top, it, we need to do a little bit of extra work to fix the top there, right? Not a huge amount of work, but you can see that it didn't do as good a job as this part, or this option. And then control points is another one, so let me move this off to the side, right? Control points is pretty good as well, so if I did control points, it would take into account the points we laid down, and then if I click uh, tessellate just to close the window, bring it off to the side. You can see that it has this kind of low poly form. It doesn't really look anything like our wine glass, but we could take this one and smooth it. So we can go up to here to mesh and smooth. And you can see here, right, now it's starting to look a little bit closer, but you can see the geometry is a little bit lower than these guys. So we can up the subdivisions, but the problem is that it ups the subdivisions, ups. It increases the subdivisions everywhere, right? And so if we increased it by one more number, we get 8,400, right? So that's not really that convenient if we wanted a number in between. So it doesn't have the flexibility of the general method. And that's why I didn't use it. But increasing the subdivisions does do a pretty good job of um, capturing the form of this. But I would say that it still doesn't do quite a, as nice a job as this one, right? Um, so this one here has higher topology, but it's, um, has um, issues, right? <laughs> issues with geometry count, right? So yeah, so the, those are the different ways you can go about it. So I do recommend that the general method for this prop in particular, right? So yeah. All right, that concludes today's tutorial on how to model a wine glass, but you can use today's technique to make other objects as well, such as vases or lamps. But yeah, that wraps things up for this one. So we'll see you in the next video. Until then, this has been Digital Dreambox, your destination for game art. <laughs>